What's up guys? Welcome back to the Goodview Woodworks channel. My name is Nathan and in this video we're going to make an awesome magic wood trivet. Now if you don't know what a trivet is, it's like a hot plate. It's something that uh, you put your hot pots on on your, on your table so they don't burn the table. Okay? Um, so this one's going to it's going to change from black to wood. So solid black to wood. It's going to be really sweet. Check it out. Guys, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. What are you waiting for? I needed to go find a piece of wood. So, <clears throat> I was looking on my wood pile here and I had this old piece of, looks like maple burl, or actually it's flame box elder. So we're gonna use this, use this piece of box elder. And we need to make it, a, we're need, we're, first things first, we're gonna cut it into a circle. All right, so I had this old Lazy Susan that I used to paint stuff on. And I just took the hardware off. It had one little screw right in the middle. And I just screwed it directly onto this piece of plywood that I had. I have uh, mounted to my table saw. So we're gonna go cut that piece on the miter saw and get it set up and then I'll show you how to cut a circle using your table saw. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the miter saw just to get it cut to an average or general size. This was about eight inches by eight inches. So we're gonna go ahead and carry it over to the table saw where we're gonna just tape up one side and you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just tape, tape, taping it up so that I can super glue the two taped sides together. That way we're not damaging the wood, no screws or anything like that. Um, and the CA glue holds very, very well. So I'm gonna get a measurement here. I want the wood to be a certain distance away from the blade. So it's about four inches. I don't want the lazy Susan hardware to hit the saw, so I have it back a little a little ways. But we're gonna go ahead and tape that up as well. And then you'll see I will stick some CA glue on one side, and then I'll spray the activator on the other side, and I will get it set in place. You don't wanna skip on, skimp on glue here. You want it to be a secure fit. Press it down for a few seconds and we'll have a really strong hold. Now, here's a warning for this one part. If you do not feel comfortable and you don't have experience on the table saw, do not attempt this at home. This is the way that I chose to do it because my bandsaw blade is not thin enough to cut a circle. It would bind up. So please be careful. I do not endorse this. Do not do this at home. I did this because I had no other method to cut a circle and to show you that there other are other options. So please be careful. Don't do it like me um, and all those things. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to raise the blade up a little bit by a little bit and I will go ahead and spin this around in a circle while I raise the blade, keeping my fingers away from the blade to be safe. I cannot stress enough, do not do this unless you are experienced on the table saw. I do not condone this and therefore I am not liable if you hurt yourself. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and we'll get this cut up and you'll see the circle emerge here in just a second. 
and then we'll go ahead and take it off of the table saw and move it to our bandsaw. You'll see here in just a minute, it comes up pretty easily with a putty knife. And I'll just lower the blade and then I'll take my putty knife and just pry it right off. This way the painter's tape is easily removed and we can just go ahead and cut it off on the bandsaw. It's a weird angle. My hand is really far from the blade. Um, it just looks very weird. So make sure you don't want to cut your fingers. That's also a big no-no. Go ahead and sand the edges really quickly. Rough sand uh, with 150 grit sandpaper. And then we'll use the trim router to route over a quarter inch round over. Uh, that way the epoxy can flow over the side. I'm going to use some sanding sealer here to seal it up. That way the epoxy doesn't need to absorb into the product or into the trivet. That way we save some epoxy and we don't get bubbles or anything like that. Just did one coat of sanding sealer here and we should be okay. It'll dry in just an hour max. It may raise the grain so you may want to sand it again after it dries. So we're going to mix up a little bit of epoxy here. This is the cheaper stuff from Home Depot. I'll link it down in the description if you want to try it. Um, I do not use this epoxy. Uh, this is more beginner level. Uh, I would not use it if I were to sell anything. If this was my own thing. I just wanted to try it. I would use this, the Famo wood glaze coat, but I would not use it if I were going to sell any of my pieces that had it. I would not use it to sell. So it's okay for a beginner and it helps to. So you're not wasting a lot of money to try something new. I would recommend to beginners just for just to learn how to use epoxy. So we're going to go ahead and get it mixed up here. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we'll go ahead and get the thermochromic powder mixed in. Now the thermochromic powder, you do need a high volume of this powder so it won't be translucent. We want it to be opaque. So you see I dumped a little bit in here. And I end up dumping more than that. Um, it, you really do need a high concentration of it. I just took a trash bag and I'm building a little dam so it doesn't run over the side and onto the floor in my house. <laughs> Worked out nicely. If you notice I have a little piece of cardboard under there, that's just to make sure everything is level. So go ahead and pour it out. And I'm going to make sure I pour enough that it runs over the edge and that it fully seals the edge. There's another thing you'll see here soon is when you have when you're pouring something on the edges, you'll actually get to see how thin the edges get when pouring epoxy. And you'll be able to see it here.
Can you wave? Can you clap? Come here, Esther. Come here, Esther. Can you clap? Can you clap? Clap for daddy, clap. Clap. Can you clap? Yeah. <laughs>thanks for watching this video I really appreciate it if you have any other ideas about how to use this trivet uh, please leave it in the comment section down below and if you want to see a different video using the thermochromic pigment let me know down there I'm not sure what I would use it for as of yet but I'm really interested in see what you guys would do so if you haven't been over there yet go over to Facebook to our Goodview Woodworks community group go over there and um, how do you do it, honey? Do you like ask to join? Go over there, ask to join, and we would love to see some of your project, projects over there as well. If you haven't been over to my website, please do that. We have some awesome products over there. It's www.goodviewwoodworks.com. And we have a lot of cool products, uh, recommended products like epoxy, and we have our own pigments, so check those out. And we also have some pretty cool merch. So go get yourself some over there if you want to support this channel. And as always, guys, thanks for hanging out with us.